Hey guys, Brandon Johnson here again, and thanks for joining me. Today we're taking a look at a classic fiddle tune, Red Haired Boy. You know, when I first played with Peter Rowan last summer at the Hook and Ladder Theater in Minneapolis, he was told that, okay, we have a band for you, we have this bluegrass band called Kind Country, and they're gonna back you up. And that was my band. And so we're sound checking, we're getting tuned up the old school way, which is without tuners. We just tune to Peter. You know, he would just give you an E, everybody would tune up to him. And the first few songs we played, were songs that he threw out there to see if you know we really knew how to play bluegrass you know he, he threw in the pines in there and, and a couple other real simple standards and another one that he threw in there was red haired boy to kind of get comfortable picking together and i also felt like he was kind of trying to see if we really knew what we were doing red haired boy this is one of those songs where you know you just you got to know this song it's it's a standard they call it a standard for a reason it's kind of it's a, it's an accessible melody as well it's it's truly a bluegrass standard and a great great song to have in your repertoire so i hope you enjoy this one and let's check it out all right let's check out red haired boy this is a real classic fiddle tune and this is definitely one I would consider to be like a wheelhouse fiddle tune. You know, when you hear when you hear Red Haired Boy come up either on stage or in a jam, I just know that I'm going to be able to shred on this one because it has a real simple form. There's not a lot of crazy stuff happening here. There's not a lot of crazy chord changes or weird timing things going on. It's very straightforward. It's an A-A-B-B form. So we play the A part twice and the B part twice, and then the whole thing starts over again. And we're playing this out of the key of A, so we're capo 2 here. We're playing it out of the G position, so you'll see the chords on the tab there are standard chords without a capo, because in the tab it's indicated that we're capo 2, so we're playing G, the G shape, right, and the F shape. Even though these are actually an A and a G chord, we're just going off of chord shapes here. And you'll see a two-note pickup there, so there's a two-note pickup that is right before the first measure, and it's open D to second fret D. And then we're gonna land at the beginning of measure number one on an open G. Right, so it's kind of a... So this is down, up, down. And then you'll see there a slide up from the second fret D to the fifth fret D. And then an open G. So that slide up is going to be on a downstroke. That's a four fret slide up. Now notice in this song there's a lot of double downstrokes. So there's a lot of, you know, it, there's there's sections where it's it's alternating picking up down up down up down. But then there's other sections where you'll notice that there's a double downstroke or maybe even three downstrokes in a row, and that's just personal preference. And you could. You could, you know, change up the strokes and the pick direction to your liking so, so that it's easier for you, but this is the way that I would this is the way that I would play it. So we're making use of that octave there, so those two notes are the same. So we're going to slide up into that octave. Play the open G on an upstroke. And of course, those are eighth notes, so that open G there on that upstroke is an eighth note. And then that open G right at the beginning is also an eighth note. Right? And the timing of that is kind of important here. So after we do that slide up, we're going to play a downstroke on the open G to second fret G. Then we're going to work our way up to the B string. A 
eighth note right there. That first fret B is going to be an eighth note. And then we're going to have two notes at the end there, an open B to first fret B. And again, you're going to see that double downstroke there. So that first fret B, eighth note, is on a downstroke. And then that open B is also on a downstroke. Okay, let's play measure number one now to the metronome. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. Okay, and that brings us into measure number two. Okay, we look at measure number two now. All these measures are essentially connected together in one long melody. You kind of look at it that way. So, you know, we're coming off of that open B to first fret B. And you remember how we had a two note pickup going into the very first measure? Well, you can kind of look at the open B to first fret B in measure number one as a pickup going into measure number two. So measure number two is going to start on the third fret B string. And we're going to be playing that on a downstroke. And right here, we're going to go into kind of a series of eighth notes here. So we're going to land on that B string, third fret. And then we're going to play a series of downstrokes on eighth notes right here on the open G. Okay, so those are actually four eighth notes in a row. Okay, so those are actually three eighth notes in a row, all on downstrokes. And right there, that second fret G is gonna start our, a little unbroken chain of 16th notes. There's a lot of downstrokes in this measure, and there's a lot of kind of single note, single string picking going on here. And you can see right there that third fret D, that note, that, that's gonna be our F chord. All right, it's actually, it's actually that chord, but when I, when, I, when I hear that and when I play that third fret D, I always think about the F chord shape right here. Just that little, that little F triad, because if we played the open E, it would actually be an F major seven, but here we're just gonna kinda stick to these major chords, so. So that third fret D right there, those are kind of those are kind of notes out of the F major chord shape or the F major scale. And the F chord actually comes in on the third quarter note of that measure. So you're going to be playing two quarter notes of G and then two quarter notes of F and that F is going to land right on that second fret G to open G. right there, and then those two notes are going to be out of the F major chord shape or the F major scale, and then so is that note too, that second fret, that second fret D, that's going to be out of your F major scale as well. And I like playing these on downstrokes actually, and, and you could do it alternating picking if you wanted to. Uh, but for some reason, for me, I've just always kind of been in the habit of playing downstrokes on this particular part of Red Heart Boy. This was a song that I learned 
years and years ago and right you know before I had decent technique or anything and I was just picking it in the way that I felt was easiest for me so you do have alternating picking when you're going from that second fret G to open G and then we land on that third fret D again and then I go back into downstrokes and then at the very end when we go three to two I do play that second fret D on an upstroke and again, that's kind of those are kind of pickup notes going into measure number three. Okay, let's play measure number two now to the metronome. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. All right, let's check out measures one and two all the way through. One, two, three, four, two. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. Okay, and that leads us into measure number three. Okay, when we look at measure number three now, we're kind of a little bit at this point breaking the trend of of a lot of repeated downstrokes, and this is mostly alternating picking all the way through, although there is a double downstroke after the first eighth note of this measure. So we're starting this on a downstroke on the open D to second fret D. And then we're gonna go to the G, and open G to second fret G to open G. Right, so it's kind of a... And then that, that open G right there is on an eighth note. And then we're gonna go back to the open G to second fret G again. And that's where our double downstroke is gonna come in. So you'll see that, that downstroke on the open G eighth note. And then there's another downstroke on the open G 16th note. That's gonna bring us into that B string. And then you'll see another double downstroke right here. And we go from that open B to first fret B. And again, that's kind of a pickup going into measure number four. But a lot of times if, if I'm playing a repeated note, like on an open G string, for example, I'm gonna play a double down stroke. And that, that's just out of habit. And you could certainly play this alternating picking as well if you wanted to. And that's just, you know, that's not correct or wrong. It's just a different way to do it. <laughs> Okay, let's play measure number three now to the metronome. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. Okay, and that leads us into measure number four. Okay, when we look at measure number four now, measure number four is probably the most challenging, technically, the most challenging lick of this entire song. 
because it uses kind of a, a, a leap of an interval. So we're going, we're doing kind of a three fret leap here on from the B string to the E string, the high E string. And then we're kind of descending and we're doing another kind of tough interval, which is an open G to fourth fret D to open G. And there's a couple ways to play that. You could play that with your little finger or your ring finger. I actually tend to play it with my ring finger. But we're gonna start this on the B string third fret and we're gonna move up to the open high E string on an upstroke. So it's gonna be third fret downstroke B to open high E on an upstroke. And then we're gonna take our index finger, we're gonna move up to this third fret high E. Right, so we're going third fret to fifth fret to third fret to open. So we're actually moving our hand. I like to move my hand physically up three frets, but basically we're going from third fret B to open E. And right when I hit that open E, I kind of shift my hand up so I can get my index finger in position to play this third fret high E. And then I actually shift down again and play that third fret B with my ring finger. Kind of like that. Right there, we're gonna land on the second fret G to open G. And then that fourth fret D to open G again. You'll see I did play that with my ring finger. So actually what's happening here is there's a fair amount of shifting going on. We're shifting our hand physically up the neck, and then we're also kind of shifting our ring finger around kind of a half a step at the end. So we're doing like a full step shift here. Those are full, full step shifts. And now we're gonna do like a half step shift. You see how I just moved my hand up just one fret length. Whereas at the beginning, I'm almost moving it an entire step or an entire two fret length at the beginning. Now another way you could play that is you could play that fourth fret D with your little finger. So you could go like this. And that would kind of allow you to not have to really shift your hand that, that last half step at the, at the very end. And it would just require a little bit of dexterity to hit that, that D string fourth fret with your little finger as opposed to your ring finger. And you could even train your fingers so that you didn't really, even though you wanted to play it with your ring finger, you don't really have to shift that much. You can kind of make that stretch that way. And I like to play it with my ring finger personally because that's that's kind of a more dominant finger for me. My little finger is my weakest finger. So I like to make that stretch and hit it with my ring finger because you know most of the time you're gonna play it better if you're if you're attempting to play it with your dominant finger. Okay, let's play measure number four now to the metronome. One, two, Three, four, two, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. 
One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. All right, let's look at measures three and four now, start to finish. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. Okay, let's look at all of part A now to the metronome. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. Okay, and that leads us into part B. Mm -hmm.